That's right, that's right. You'll never leave and forsake us, Lord. We thank you for that, too. You're tuned in live right here on the KFWF 24-7 broadcast with yours truly, the King's daughter, Naomi. That was Sunil, too, with my life. I tell you, it's always, always a privilege and an honor to be here with you. We have special guests with us on today, guys. We have with us none other than Stephen Dalton and the Leviticus Singers of Charlotte. Hey, what a blessing and a privilege and an honor, I tell you. How are you doing? We're doing, doing good. Good. That's doing one. Good. Hey, good. awesome, awesome. I know we got Steve Dalton on. Hey, 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 everybody. This is Steve Dalton of LSOC. We're excited about being on the show. All right, now we got his lovely wife, Miss Lisa. Hello, everybody. Mir. Thank uh-huh. you for having us. All right, now we also have Miss Kendra. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, awesome, awesome. And last but certainly not the least, we have Miss Cindy. Cindy, Cindy. Sydney. Cindy. Hey, I almost had you right. <laughs> hey, that's all right. You in there, Mama. Hey, Amen. Right, <laughs> hey, man, Miss Sydney. Wow, it's such a privilege and an honor to have you guys on. All right, we'll start with um. Uh, Miss Sydney, Miss Sydney, you'll start off with us. Just give us a little bit of history. Tell the listening audience a little bit about you. Oh my goodness! Let's see. Where to begin? Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Born and raised. I've been a part of Leviticus since I was 16 years old. Wow. And let's see. No one ever thought that the ministry was going to take off the way that it has. It has been such an honor, such a blessing, just being able to develop my gift and minister to people, nationalities, just the way that God is moving is, is, is crazy. Um, all I wanted to do was just sing for God. I mean, my whole entire life, um, and, and God has given me the platform to be able to do so. So it's an honor. It's a blessing even to meet you today. I mean, Amen. wow, this is amazing. I, I never thought that, that I would be here, that the group would definitely be here. This is, man, God is really doing his thing right now. So mm. and that's just a little bit about me and the group and where everything started. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And how long you been with the group? Yes, ma'am. Since I was 16, I'm 28 now, so some years. Wow. <laughs> Go on with your best. Yes, yes. More like family. More more like family. Um, I was a senior in high school when I started thinking with Leviticus and see you to got, see what God has done. That's beautiful. Far. And I know that he's going to expand us past what we even think. You know, our dreams are so small to God, you know. Right. What he wants to do as long as we are obedient and willing, you know, to do whatever it is. I mean, we're only vessels. You know, that's so wonderful. Just to be able to have this platform is it's an honor. I definitely don't take it lightly. Um, and it is a privilege. It's a privilege to suffer the way that Christ has. Because as worship leaders, you do suffer. So I think Amen. all of that said, I mean, it's, it's an honor. I, I Amen. Really change the thing. Listen, Steve, I see yeah. right now I'm going to have to have y'all on individually. Now, let me start. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, you, you're dealing with a fivefold on him, you know, right now. That's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I yes, love it. Look, yes, we might have seriously. to push the next group back, but that's awesome. I love it. Thank you, Miss Sydney. Oh my God, you already got that's me ma'am. round up. Yes, ma'am. Thank Look, you. Look, Kendra, go yes, ahead. Thank give, you. Us, <laughs> give us a little history, Kendra. Uh, well, I'm Kendra. I've been with Leviticus. I want to say since 2009. Mm-hmm. So, um, a few years, and they're definitely like family. And um, it's so crazy the way that God works things out because. I thought that when I joined Leviticus, I was coming to help Steve with his vision. And I didn't know that God was going to use the the group to help with my deliverance and my maturity and basically seeing things his way and stop being so rebellious. And through the years, there's been a lot of, and I was just thinking about this the other day, through the years, there's been a lot of um, disagreements on my side and not wanting to do certain things and having my opinions about certain things, but the patience of these people mm. with me, it was God showing me his patience, <laughs> his patience with Amazing. me, you know, like see, yeah. these are a group of people who saw who I was before I even believed who I was. Mm. So mm. it, it really 
this group has really helped shape me into the woman of God that I am supposed to be and still am becoming. And I just thank God for them. And I am just so excited for where we are and where we're going. Beautiful. Oh, my God. I'm getting chills over here, Miss Lisa. (laughs) (laughs) Miss Lisa. Oh, my. (laughs) Glory to God. Okay, Miss Lisa, give us a little history. Wow. um, I am Lisa Dalton, wife of Stephen Dalton. I've been with the ministry since its conception. Amen. uh, 15 years now. And I love doing ministry and with my husband and with our family. Um, as Kendra stated and Star has stated, you know, they've been with us for a very long time and it just makes my heart you know, it to to me, um yes, we do minister through song, but just to see how the Lord has really blessed not only the ministry but the people that are a part of us that who have entrusted us um, with their spiritual growth, as well as their musical talents and gifts. Um, it, it just does my heart so well. And I, I laughed when Kendra <laughs> was talking about some of the rebellion. It stars well. You know, I've been with these young ladies from before they became mothers and became yeah. young women. So I've been um, that mama that say, can't do this, do this. No, that's not right. Yes, no. You know how that goes. But right. it makes me smile today. Uh, when we have new people come aboard and I don't have to say, oh, no, you can't do that now. Now they become the voice of the mother. Um, right. So um, it, it's just great. And Stephen and I doing ministry together, it's a it's a wonderful thing. And, and um, God is doing it all for us. Awesome. Yeah. Amen. Wow. That's beautiful. Stephen, go ahead and give the listener just a little background. Sure. Visionary. Um, right. <laughs> you know, everyone has, has, has spoke so beautifully uh, in regards to the ministry and uh, and and their, and their personal lives, and, you know, and and as a leader, you know, it just blows me away. Um, right. But Steve Dalton, I mean, you know, the Lord uh, began to shape this thing back in 1999, um, and we were, we were supporting a, a national conference uh, here in town with people coming from across the country, everywhere. So after the third year, um, that's when he gave me the vision to do um, the, the Leviticus singers which had already been spoken over me as a child. And um, so from there, you know, we're, we're here now. I mean, you know, 13 years later, um, father, um, loving husband, um, a work in progress. Um, you know, although we are leaders, as my wife indicated, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're still growing as leaders as well um, in our own callings. And I think the most important thing uh, that I want to just deposit into the people, you may have, a design for how you want things to go with your life and with your ministry, et cetera. But the Bible speaks on, you know, he would give you the desires of your heart. The desires of, the, 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 those desires are his desires. So right. at the end of the day, uh, what does he want is what it should always be. So when we think we're getting together for singing, we're coming together to pray. Hmm. Or we think we're getting together for this, and a third, someone is calling a fast, and I don't have to call it all the time. And that's what I love. So at the end of the day, You know, no cliche, you know, it it goes greater than ministry, although he has gifted us and taken us many stages, you know, all across the, you know, this southeast and, you know, we're going Midwest now, we're branching out and national this, national that, but still at the end of him. So that's it in a nutshell. Wow. That is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Well, the Holy Spirit is having me to start with Kendra. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm really excited about this. Wow, y'all is amazing already. Kendra, God be glory. listen, the listening audience, I'm telling you, we're going to help somebody today. Help me, Jesus. You said that it has helped you being a part of this ministry, and it helped you with your rebellious. It helped you to stop being so rebellious. I really want you to touch on that. There's somebody listening out there. That, you know, it's 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 really, they probably rebellious for whatever reason. But I, I want you to touch on that, if you will. Just minister to the listening audience a little bit about rebellion. And um, tell us tell us one of your testimonies. When you were rebellious and, and well, you had, you know, when God actually showed you it and, and what you do to correct it. Well, um, 
to be totally honest, God has been speaking about my attitude and my rebellion since I was about 15, 16 years old, before I even knew mm -hmm. that I could be as nasty as I became. Oh, wow. Because um, I remember getting prophesied over when I was like 15 years old. And it was a, an apostle that used to come to our church all the time. And he said to me, he was like, you can be the next big thing because your, your voice is needed for the world, but God is not going to catapult you into anything until you change your attitude. And when he said it, it made me get an attitude. Like I remember rolling my eyes. I remember feeling like, what, what's wrong with my attitude? Like, what's wrong with me? Like, I, um, I'm only tack. Like, in order to get tack, I used to say this all the time, in order to get tack, you got to tick. Like, if you tick, <laughs> then I'm going to tack. Like, that's just what it's going to be. So you can't get tack without tick. So if you don't tick, then you won't see me. No one wants to see me. Like, and I remember being like that. Wow. And it definitely came from a, pay, a place of rage mm. and hurt and rejection and not necessarily learning how to cope with feelings. Um. I tell people all the time, we as a people, we, we just move on. We, don't re we rarely deal with the things that we're facing and that, we, um, that we're going through because we have so much going on. We don't have time to sit and cry and grieve because we got bills that are due. We got kids. We got this. We got that. So um, we just continue to move without dealing with whatever traumatic event has happened in the past. And that was my story. So... I was always seen as the angry one, the pop-off queen, um, the one that um, always did what she wanted to do. And my strength was given to me by God for where I'm going. But because of the things that I decided, things that were given to me as far as like family generational curses as well as things that I've decided on my own, to engage in has caused me to use that strength, not for him, but for me in fleshly ways. And um, this past year, especially with my son, I have a three-year-old son, the Holy Spirit has been showing me his patience with me through how I deal with my child. And mm -hmm. I will chastise my son about something he's doing. You're not listening or right. you're not doing this. And the Holy Spirit will tell me, well, you're not either. So in order for you to want him, and my desire is for him to be so obedient and, and so such a, a man of God, especially with the way that our country is going, I want him to always be cautious, to be, to be God-like. So in order for that to happen, his first example is me. So God has really been stripping me of me and giving me more of him, um, I um, used to think that I had a lot of church hurt. I grew up in the church. I'm a, I'm a pastor's kid, been in the church my whole life. So with that being said, there was a lot of things that I saw that wasn't of God right. and was more of like religion and tradition. And that added on to my rebellion as well. But whoever is out there listening that has church hurt and is staying away from church or church people, and you're justifying it based off of the fact of what they did, they were wrong. Whatever they did that hurt you, they were wrong. But you be the change that you want to see. Because maybe what, what God is showing me is that everything that happened to me within church that was wrong happened so that I could be aware and so that I can help change it. Right. Anything that makes you angry, anything that is your passion, that is what God has placed in you to change. We all have purpose. We all have a reason to be here to manifest something within the kingdom. So whatever that thing is, that is your purpose. That's what you need to tap into. And I am just so glad that I learned that before I became bitter because we have a lot of, a lot of people that have been just hurt so much that they are now bitter. Like, yeah, you forgive the person, but you don't want nothing to do with them anymore. That's right. not, that's not what God, you know, told us to do. Um, so yeah. Um, and this is a daily, this is a daily thing. Let me go ahead and put that out there. I'm not 100% delivered. There are some days you can still get Shaquita and that's the alter ego in me that goes around <laughs> shanking people like that. There are some days you can still get Shaquita. She is alive and well, but the difference in, in me now is that I don't start off with that, and I make sure that I am very prayerful and that I am very slow to be offensive now 
there was a time where I would just say whatever came to me. But I'm slow to be offensive now because my main my main goal is not to offend, it is to help. And I actually have that on my wall. When I speak, my main, my heart of hearts want to help you. I don't want to offend you. I don't want to belittle you. So mm-hmm. if those are my goals, how do I need to speak to you in order to, for that goal to be accomplished? That's so wonderful. that's how I'm going into 2017. Awesome. Literally mm. awesome. That wow. Yes, very, wow. Very. Steven, powerful, Steven, Steven, how mm. do you deal with that as a leader? <laughs> <laughs> nobody, Help somebody. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. You know, when, when you're able to recognize a gift in people, right. and that's the thing. When you recognize a gift and calling in people, then there's a need for you to be, in, to be intimidated. Because at the end of the day, he gives us sheep to shepherd. That's mm-hmm. just how it works. And you have to know those that you shepherd. Right. Mm-hmm. 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 Man. Mm-hmm. Mama, Mama Lisa, how you deal with that? Yes, ma'am. How'd you deal with that? Well. Because, I mean, I, she said she mother, was Sister just... Pop-Off. <laughs> I, I, I know Sister Pop-Off. <laughs> I know her name. I, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just want to say this. You this know, was but, look. I just gotta add this in there. It's a little humor, but you know, I I put together concerts. We do a faith walking promo tour, and so this sister called me and said uh, she had a a rapper that she wanted to you know be on one of my tours in Jacksonville. So I said, okay, um, well, what's his name? His name was Preacher Pop Off. I said, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. His name was Preacher <laughs> Pop Off. <laughs> I said, I don't know. That name scared me. Look. <laughs> That's funny. That's it funny. was funny. But anyway, I ain't going to go into preacher pop-off. I just wanted to mention that. Sister, you're not by yourself. <laughs> That's okay. It's he okay. called himself preacher pop-off. But okay, Mama, Mama, how do you deal with that? What would you recommend? Well, and this you know, is it's serious. That's a serious process, um, rebellion. It's a serious re- process. And listen, Kendra, I know she got upset every time somebody called her be- rebellious. You rebellious. So, uh, and you know what I'm saying? We go Jesus, through that. Listen, listen. Let me, yeah. let me, one more thing about rebellion, even on a spiritual level, mm-hmm. um, the spirit of pride. Come on. And why pride is so hard to get rid of is because you have justification as to why you feel the way you feel and why you do the things that you do. So when people used to call me rebellious, I'm not rebellious. I just got my own mind. Like I just, I just think on my own. I do my own thing. And maybe, maybe you should try it. Like maybe you should try thinking on your own. Like maybe you should try doing this and doing that. And it wasn't that what I was saying was wrong. It was just coming from a place of malice. You know, right. it was coming from a place of hostility because I was so used to being misunderstood and not heard. Right. So the rebellion came, I'm going to do what I want to do because y'all ain't listening anyway. So all the leaders that are good. listening this and you have good. a rebellious sheep, please be patient with that person mm. and please try to get to the root of their rebellion because it is never what it looks like on the surface. There is something deeper in that person that needs to be called to deliverance, that needs to be called into submission. So that's what your prayer needs to be. If you have a rebellious person in your group or a rebellious person in your church and you're running out of patience, you need to ask God exactly what is the root of that problem. Because rebellion is just... Mm-hmm. All right. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kendra, you gotta talk. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. She's right. Jesus. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the pay- I'm sorry, Mama. Go ahead. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, I, you know, I've, I've learned to just sit back and and, and relax and watch. It's like, you all know how I do now. Just sit back mm-hmm. and relax and watch. Wow. Um, but Miss Naomi, to yes. in response to um, your question and how do I handle it? Um, over the years, I've just learned to pray, um, tell the truth in love, and allow them room to grow. Um, right. Because, uh, you know, I I don't think I've ever had a rebellion spirit. You know, I've been in church all my life, but I recognize it. And, and I know um, we all have our own journey and we all have our own battles. And then it's not until, you know, the Holy Spirit reveals those things and we submit ourselves to him um, and we have a desire to be delivered. 
we just have to pray. And so that's that's how I deal with it. You know, there's been many a days, um, Kendra and I start and, and all the others. You know, Keela's mm-hmm. not on the call. Um, and some of the other young ladies. And, and my husband deal with the men and I deal with the ladies. You know, we, uh. we've had many Mama Lisa conversations. Um, we just need some Ms. Lisa time. Um, and so, again, it's not just about singing for us. You know, we don't just get together just to sing. As my husband stated earlier, some days we don't even get to sing right. because we start off with Bible study and it ends up, you know, two, three hours just going into the Word. And, and sometimes we all end up on the floor, <laughs> you know, and, and praying and interceding for each other. So, um, and it makes me feel so good, you know, as a as a woman of God, as a missionary, and as the mother of the ministry, when you see, you know, the people that you labor with, you know, go forth in the word. And that's what true discipleship is about. You know, you, you feed the word, you give them the direction, and you see them go out. And so it, it makes us feel really good, really good. And I always know they're going to work it out, whatever it is. They, they know the way now. They can work it out. Right. So so when something, when a situation comes up, you don't try to per se handle it. You know they're going to handle it. Mm-mm. Oh. Absolutely. They're big girls now. They're big boys now. I mean, I did. I said, y'all need a moment? No, no, we good. Okay, well, y'all fix it. Don't, don't let it linger too long. Fix it. You know, and they come back, you know, and it's it's all good. And I just sit and smile. You know, because at some point, you know, you can't be on milk all the time. You know, <clears throat> and so we just allow them to be themselves. And they allow us to be ourselves. And, you know, we come back and we hug and kiss. And we go sing beautiful music together. Right. So, Stephen, has it gotten to a point where you said, you know what, we're just going to shut it down? <laughs> um, never. <laughs> never. The reason why I say never mm-hmm. is because um, we've had, you know, even you know, in the midst of us, and this is the thing about love. You don't know what real love is until love is tested. Come on. So we have, you know, as a ministry, we've been tested before. Um, but even at the worst well, what we would consider, you know, from a from a from a natural standpoint, what the worst moment is, um, at the end of the day, because I'm a man of great faith, and um, God's love, you know, you can't even measure that. I still respond. I still responded, you know, trying to still love, trying to still connect, trying to still, okay, let's get together. Okay, you know, well, how can we fix this? Although at the moment, you know, it doesn't seem like, man, how are we gonna come up out of this or you know, is this the end? Is this supposed to end like this? You know, and, you know, they'll tell you, you know, just as a testament at the end of the day, you know, as leaders, you know, you have to be humble or you know how to humble yourself, you know, right. to be able to, mm-hmm. okay, let me take a step back and see me while I'm trying to see everybody else. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, no no one has it all together. So, you know, and and, and just adding to what, you know, Kendra was saying, my wife was saying, the biggest, the biggest thing is love. I mean, Christ's love is just so amazing. I mean, I mean, what can you say about it? So I approach ministry when I'm dealing with people, and, you know, oftentimes, you know, in the past, I had to tell my wife, okay, well, we're going to do it like this. We're going to handle it like this. Although we know certain things are going on or this has been said or, you know, I may think this, I may th- think that, I still treat no one differently. I just love on people. And at the end of the day, people, you know, I mean, they said they it. They them. mature. They mature, and they come around their own selves. And it's amazing, you know, when you can see yourself. I mean, that's that's what this walk is about. At the end of the day, you know, we're creating an image and the likeness of Him. So at some point, you know, when are when? And my wife just said it. When do you? Okay, let me take a look and step back and look at me. And you know, Kendra just said it. Everything she just said, you know, it was just mm-hmm. profound in own time. So right. I've never had the moment that this is the end. Never, not not to this day. I had never had that moment because I just I just knew what the Lord had already confirmed in my spirit. No, not like this, not like this. So as a leader and as as shepherds, and there's this another thing too. Kendra spoke about leaders. You need to know how to how, how to go get your sheep. That's right. Don't you leave people out. out. Don't 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 just leave people out there just to you know just just to be hanging out there. Mm-hmm. If you know you have a calling and an attachment to somebody, you know what I mean. So okay. at the end of the day. Even in our disagreement points, you know, you know, everyone kind of, you know, we, 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 you, 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 you take a step back and, you know, try to try to try to give space for people to breathe and, you know, kind of pull your emotions back in. But at the end of the day, when you know you connected and that it's not over, you know, you you go and you reach, 
you go read. You humble yourself and you read. So that has been the testament of our ministry. We're still here, and the Lord has taken us higher because we've been through the trenches with each other. You know, so if that J.J. Harrison, after this, you know, so now we're on the after this and still going higher, yet still learning, Mm -hmm. growing in him, but he's still taking us higher because we recognize. Amen. 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 That is awesome. Wow. Okay. Wow. Star. <laughs> so, deep, right? so, so Cindy, <laughs> Sydney is star. Star, can I call you star? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I said, Whichever what? one, mama. Okay. <laughs> hey, I say star sound really easy. <laughs> I'm like, Cindy, is it yes, spelled? Ma'am. No. But that's good. Wow. That's amazing. You know, Star, I was going to yeah. direct this one to you um, because it's amazing when you got a group of people that can come together with a passion for Jesus and fulfill yes, a purpose. Ma'am. Now, um, how, as a team player, do you respond when you see the rebellious spirit? Help somebody. I don't know. That to me. <laughs> Like, I, I think because we have a respect first for this ministry yes. and for Steve and for Lisa and all that they do, Kendra is my sister. My brother is really my real, James Hancock, he's really my real brother. Um, Keila, all of us are brothers and sisters. So at the end of the day, you don't go tell mama and daddy every little thing that your brother and your sister do. Right, you right. try to fix it yourself. Mm-hmm. You try to work mm-hmm. it out yourself. Mm-hmm. Like Miss Lisa mm-hmm. and like Steve was saying, we are all spiritually mature. So, yeah, we do have to take time to, okay, we need to separate. We need to kind of get this together. And there may be times to where we need to fast on this. And there may be mm-hmm. times to where we take it to the leader and say, hey, mm-hmm. now nah, this, you know, we, we feeling tight right now. You know, but mm-hmm. everything, it, it depends on the situation. Everything doesn't mean a immediate response. Everything mm-hmm. don't mean, but when it comes to rebellion, because of where we know God is trying to take us, mm-hmm. we can't have it. You, mm-hmm. you cannot run away ways and have a book bag on and an iPad and some heavy tennis shoes. <laughs> you need to run with that's something right. that's going to help you move. You need something that's going to be sticking to your body and that's going to be smooth so that you can get the longevity, so that you can get the perseverance, so that you can have the endurance mm-hmm. that you need to run the race. It's not about the fa- it's, it's the, it's the stride, how long. So to me, nothing that will weigh us down as a ministry can we take on this journey with us. Mm-hmm. So depending on the scenario, depending on the magnitude of the situation, it depends on how the Holy Spirit does us. We're all Holy Spirit sensitive, and God equips us with such a great discernment to be able to listen and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and move under His guidance on how to handle the situation. Mm-hmm. You know, before it's a seed, it's just God. You see what I'm saying? And, right. and there's mm-hmm. an order to things. So, I mean, the rebellion, the pride, we don't have time for it where we're going. So it, it, mm-hmm. it's only a matter of time before we like, look, we got to check ourselves individually and we check each other collectively so that we can do what God has called us to do. Because there's always going to be a stumbling block. It's always going to be some sort of distraction. The devil comes to kill, steal, and to destroy, to mm-hmm. lie, and to wear us out. So there's going to be a point to where, yeah, we're going to have to fall on our face. We're going to have to consecrate. We're going to have to get into that word. We're going to have to look at ourselves as individuals first and let God peel us back and deal with our hearts, deal with our motives, deal with our intentions. It it takes a a time of reflection. This is not just a singing group. Mm -hmm. So you can hear, and as I pray to God that the audience are ministered to as well, this is not just something that we like to do to just take up space and look good and sound pretty. This is a ministry. We are having an assignment. We have a charge to keep. So where we're going, we ain't got time for no foolishness. We about our father's business and that alone. So we we handle each other. You see what I'm saying, mama? We get this thing right behind closed doors. And when you see us out, you see smiles, giggles, and Jesus. Amen. We're the unit. <laughs> we, we come in with the anointing. Yeah. We done been through some stuff. We come in with some fire and we come in with some truth and we're coming with love and we're coming with light. 
We have our assignment. We have a charge to keep. Us as believers, it's not just a Leviticus thing. This is a Christian thing. This is a believer thing. We have a charge to keep as believers. We don't got time for nothing holding us back in this journey. We don't have time to be dealing with no petty stuff that we need to leave in the past. Forgive who you need to forgive. Make phone calls. Get it right and let's move. Come on now. Glory to God. Souls at the end of the day. Honey, you just mm-hmm. preached so deliverance. I'm going to say my heart beat, my underarm sweating. <laughs> you just, listen to you, you just gave, look, she just gave the resume on how to win. That's called I win right there. <laughs> listen, that's it. Don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. We all got struggles. We yes. all got something that we're facing. Like Kendra said, oh, my goodness, the way that she put that thing was right. Mm-hmm. We got babies, jobs, stretch marks, and bills. We got lives to live, okay? We're humans just like everybody else. But what we cannot take away is the charge and the anointing that God has, yes. the purpose that God has mm-hmm. put on our life. It is something that cannot be prepared. Like, we can't be compared to nobody else in the world. Us mm-hmm. as believers, we are the salt and we are the light. So anything that diminishes that, anything that makes someone not see God in you is a distraction and it has to be removed so that God's glory can be revealed on this earth. Yes. Amen. Anything that takes away from him, Amen. God does. Amen. We're in a new day and it's about the soul. The devil is out. He is doing his job. Where we at? Where we at as the soldiers of God? Where we at in Christ suffering? Where we at in our in our thinking? Come on. We well, that's good. To that's we good. We do. We don't have time for that. Hey Amen. That's good, sister. I tell you, that is really good. Wow. Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. The song <laughs> I Win. <laughs> Wow. Listen, I could talk to y'all all all day. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, my God. That is beautiful. And this is what I'm saying. Y'all need to just get a show. How about that? $100 a month. Just get a show. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Lord. Um, and when you go do your look, look, go out and use the, look, the tools, the vocal cords that God gave you. Just tell them, tune in to our show every week. Yes. Oh, my ma'am. goodness. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Man, yeah. that's awesome. Hey, y'all helping me out. I about want to ask Kendra a question. She probably can help me because she sound like me. <laughs> Lord, I'm rebellious. I mean, I'm here. No, no. <laughs> now, offline, offline. I can't let everybody see that side of me. You know what I'm saying? There it is. There it is. Don't, don't, let, don't let everybody see your humanity. There you go. There you go. We're here to teach the vanity, <laughs> not humanity. <laughs> There it is. There it is. Oh, that's beautiful. It. Hey, oh, and Star so just, she just got me right on good. That's the recipe to I win. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So, so, so who writes the song, Stephen? <laughs> um, um, I write the songs, and what happens is because I'm, because I'm surrounded by, um, just, you know, anointed yes. singers. Yes. You know, um, I, I, I bring them the basis of, you know, of what I have, you know, my parts and things like that. Right. And then, because we've been singing together so long, I kind of let, I kind of turn everybody loose. That's and then beautiful. we just kind of start shaping the song, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. So I'll bring the basis, yeah. the lyrics, the music, that I'll, I'll produce it in that respect. And then, um, you know, like I said, and I bring it to, I'll bring it to the singers and then the singers and we, yo. <laughs> and comes, then it really comes to life. It really comes to life, yeah. you know, when, once they actually, you know, you know, just, you know, put their grace on it. So that's how it works. That's a run. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So you got a song out. Is this your new single, I Win? Um, that's that's our current single right now okay, um, that we have been, uh, you know, really promoting. And that's at radio, you know, in different parts of the country right now. And, um, you know, we're just excited about, you know, it, it's still, you know, being buzzed and still being played and, you know, even the people that we have featured on it. I mean, you know, I mean, this guy's just doing some amazing things. And not only that, the, the biggest and most important thing is it is based on a true story. That's the first thing. And then the video, um, I know if you had an opportunity to view it, that goes along with it. It's a, it's a visual that just really tells the story of the everyday person and how, you know, at the end of the day, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So if you don't know him, this is our calling card, or our business card. This is how you can get to know him and begin your true winning process. You might have what you call luck right now, but mm-hmm. there is another way. 
of which you can win every time, even when you're not winning from, from what you see, because these things are your temple in your spirit, a quickening of, I'm a victor, never a victim. That should always be in yourself. That's how it works. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and listen to a little bit of I Win. You want to, um, you want to expound a little bit on that song and introduce it for us? Sure. Um, this is our Steve Dalton in uh, LSOC. Um, this is our current single, I Win, the remix. It features uh, LeJune Thompson, of course, lead singer from Donna Lawrence and Tri-City Singers, as well as uh, Uncle Reese, which is, he's down there from your neck of the woods, Jacksonville. Amen. Amen. Yes, Uncle Reese. And, you know, the Leviticus Singers of Charlotte. Uh, Lisa Dalton, Shaquilla Baker, Kendra Washington, James is on lead, and also Sydney are there on lead. So um, that's it, and it's been blessing the world, and we hope that it continues to bless the world, because at the end of the day, life and death is in the power of your tongue. So just choose life, and you will win. All right, now, hey, keep it locked right here on the KFWF 24-7 broadcast with our win. From Steve Dalton and the Levitical Singers. If you can't make it, or that your life is over. I know you've been through some hard times. But remember, my friend, quitting is not an option. Steve Dalton, Leviticus, Uncle Reese, let's go. That's beautiful. 
My God, I love that. Mm. Cheers again. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> I win. Ah, oh, that was nice. Ah, oh, that ended. Who was that on the end? In him, I win. Ooh. Who was that? That's Steven. currently uh, Lejeune right now that you're hearing right now. Oh, that was Lejeune. Okay, that was beautiful. Yeah. My yeah. goodness. So it, start, it, start, it started with James, and then Sydney jumped in, and then okay. Lejeune uh, got the end. And then so right now, Uncle, Uncle Reese is on right now. Oh, okay. No, you hear the delay. I, I'm talking about at the end, end. <laughs> oh, I got you, got you, got you, got you. Uh, you'll hear at the end, but I'm like, man, ugh. that was beautiful. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to put y'all in rotation for sure. Oh, wow. Thank you. To God for the glory. Thank you. Yes. Wow. Tell the listening audience how they can get in touch with um, Steve Dalton and Leviticus to get their, your music. I mean, what, wait, let me ask you this. You have any more albums out? Y'all just, just you have, how many projects? Actually, um, act, actually, um, we have, um, new music coming, uh, within, a, within a few short months. So, um, Again, we have more surprises, more features. People are going to be surprised. Okay. And here's the thing, and uh, we're going to get to the whole album thing, but, you know, just because you're an indie artist, it don't mean that you can't be at the top of your game and be professional as a national artist. So I, I want to squash that myth right there. Right. So, um, you know, the Lord has, you know, given us great connections in, but we do have, um, you know, new, new music coming within a few months that we're excited about and that we believe that, that it's going to really bless the world. We know that sounds like a cliche, but, right. you know, everyone has been speaking about issues. People have issues. So, you know, my prayer is that we introduce them to the God of the issue. Come on now. That's awesome. Social media, you can find us. So Facebook, Leviticus Charlotte, and then on Twitter, uh, LSO Charlotte. And then, of course, we're on Google, YouTube. Just type in Leviticus Singers, Steve Dalton. I mean, you can find us any and everywhere. We need to go on iTunes, anywhere digital media is sold. So that's where you can find us and connect with us through social media. That is awesome. Now, I'm going to quickly go down um, the row and let y'all at least, if someone just tuned in and they missed everything else you said, I want y'all to leave them a little 30-second nugget, just a little 30-second nugget, however the Lord leads you, um, before we get ready to close out. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to start with Star, just 30 seconds. Just leave a little, little nugget with the listening audience, however the Lord leads you. Okay. Um, for anyone who missed it, for those who were tuning in, first of all, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And if I could leave anyone with anything, it is to never, ever, ever stop fighting. Amen. Fight for yourself. Fight for your for your freedom. Fight for your freedom for your future, for your children, for your family. Fight for your relationship with God. Just never stop. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are, what life looks like. It does not matter. You serve a God who created the universe. Never give up. Never. That's Amen. what I'll leave everybody with. And be blessed. Never give up. All right. God bless you. Happy New Year. Is Kendra there? Sorry. I okay. to my mute button. Okay. Um, <laughs> I uh, definitely want to thank you for having us and, and seeing our vision and, and seeing that we are um, people that are just after God's own heart and just yes. want to help people see more of him. Um, as far as the people listening, I know that a lot of people are making New Year's resolutions and all of that cliche stuff. I just want all of my believers to know that whatever it is that you're changing, it's not going to happen overnight. I know that that's what it looks like, yes. but that's it. Deliverance in the spiritual is just like surgery in the natural. If I had a heart transplant, yeah, I'm healthy and I'm alive, but I can't run a marathon once I get discharged from the hospital. I have to still do some things to, to strengthen myself. So never lose faith in your deliverance. is going to happen. You will be delivered. You will be free. And that thing will be a testimony. Um, so just stay encouraged. Amen. Wow. Amen. Mama Lisa. All you need is faith. Amen. And with faith you need Jesus. You know, so with, without him it's impossible. Without faith it's impossible to please God. So have faith. Um, you know, you have to have Jesus first. And um, know that he's already got it done. You just got to go through the process. That means have faith. That's Amen. It. Amen. And um, the visionary founder, Mr. Stephen <laughs> Dalton himself. Y'all hearing it right here on the KFWF 24-7 broadcast. And go ahead, give us the last 30 seconds. Sure. Um, 
that quitting is not an option, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like at the end of the day. Um, you know, the Bible says that he will never leave you or forsake you. So just, again, my wife just said, have faith. Um, but most importantly, strengthen your relationship with him. And if you don't know him, you know, take this time out. Don't make no resolution. Make a commitment. Make a vow that you want to do better. And, you know, doing better means, you know, I need to get closer to God. Whatever it takes, just know him more. Because if you know him more, then, you know, your life can begin to change. If you will be, be able to take the journey, not the sprint, but the journey to begin to get better. Because at the end of the day, you can't do it without him. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Amen. Amen. Wow. You know what? You've heard from Steve Dalton and the Leviticus singers out of Charlotte. Is it North Carolina? Yes. Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Wow. That was amazing. I tell you what, I pray that your endeavors from this day forward will certainly be escalated and um, increased because you all are certainly on a great road already so uh, i pray escalation and increase in jesus name so thank y'all so much for your time i appreciate it and hey really consider that radio show man i'm ready to start tomorrow <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that we know was you can okay. get us set up. We, yes. we got we got an inside track, so we know you can get us set up. Hey, hey I'm telling you, you're ready. <laughs> Y'all can start yes, here and then branch off on your own. Hey, leave a little drippings over here on the KFWL twenty four seven broadcast. <laughs> Hey, I love it. I love you guys. Love your star, Kendra, Miss Lisa, and again, fa- uh, the oh, founder, you, Stephen. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Love Amen. you, too. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you are so welcome. Yeah. Y'all hold on just a minute. We're going to go out with All for Your Glory by Berna. Enjoy. Show them all your love and how the 
all these gifts And uh, it's so many that I cannot live I'm so blessed that you even decided to choose me There's no other way that I would want it to be I want to thank you for entrusting me With the tools of life so I can walk around and live right So many people are depending on me And watching my every move because they're trying to see If I'm going to fall under pressure when the enemy comes Am I going to stand my ground or take off and run? You have a purpose for my life, I can't deny the fact All the tools you're giving me, I'm going to use to the max There's still so many things that I have to do But I'm only taking my instructions from you Lord, I thank you for the gift that you have given me And I just want to say that it's all for your glory 